And if you mix these two things up, your music is going to suffer dearly. A lot of people out there talking about when you should be using limiters and clippers, and no one's giving good, actionable advice. So in this video today, I'm going to break down what a limiter is, what a clipper is, what they do, and when you should be using them, and when you shouldn't be using them. There's a lot of people mixing these two things up and it's killing their music. Now to use limiting and clipping effectively, you're gonna wanna have a good understanding of compression. So to help you on your journey to understanding how to use compression, what it is, the best settings for your music, go to the description and download my free guide on perfect compression. This is gonna break down all the different strategies for using a compressor on your music and help you dial in the best settings possible. Now the easiest way for me to show you the difference between a limiter and a clipper is actually using this software called Plugin Doctor. But this is gonna give us basically an analysis of what is actually going on under the hood of a limiter and a clipper. So I have Waves L1 and I have Little Clipper by Boz Digital. I have the oscilloscope set to one kilohertz and this is the waveform that we have going in. Okay, so this is what we're feeding into these two different plugins. Okay, let's start with the limiter. Now the way limiters work is that if your signal or your audio goes above a threshold, it's going to basically stomp that signal down so that it doesn't really exceed the threshold that much. So it's basically acting as a compressor with really fast attack and usually really short release times in a really high ratio, okay? That's gonna keep our signal from going too high above our threshold. Let's see what it looks like digitally. So here's our signal. You can see it fed into this plugin. Here's the level of that, that 1000 hertz signal. If we do any adjustment above that signal, nothing changes to the waveform. If we start bringing that threshold below our signal, now we're starting to get a limiting effect on this signal, okay? So all it's really doing is smashing down all the volume that's above that threshold to that limit, okay? That's why it's called a limiter. And usually it does this relatively cleanly. Let me show you what the harmonics look like. Okay, so these are all the different artifacts that happen when we start limiting audio. Okay, as we go below our threshold, immediately when we hit our waveform, we're introducing artifacts, okay? So you can see a number of harmonics that are generated, and these are relatively quiet compared to our, our main signal. So our signal is sitting here at minus 15, and the first artifact that we see, the first harmonic is like at minus 84 dB. That's very, very, very quiet, okay? So the distortion that's introduced from a limiter is pretty quiet. Okay, so this is stuff that we probably won't hear that much. Now, if you start really overdriving it, these things can build up. Now, another way to visualize this is by doing something like this, where we have two signals. We have this quiet signal and then a loud signal. So this is kind of like a drum transient. This is like a snare drum or a kick drum or something. Now, as we lower our threshold, only the louder signal is being attenuated. Okay, and when we get to the same level as the quiet signal and we keep going, now we're attenuating everything and reducing the volume. So this is essentially how a limiter works is it targets the loudest parts of your audio and then lowers them down. That allows you to maximize the amount of density in your track in a relatively clean way. Let's take a look at a clipper. Now you can think of a clipper as basically a limiter, but its attack time is instantaneous, meaning it just shaves off whatever peak goes above it and sets it to our threshold level. We'll start with the oscilloscope again. As I bring our threshold down on our clipper, watch what happens to the tops of these waveforms. It's clipping the top. So that's where the name comes from. And if we go back to our limiter example and we go down, it maintains the shape of that waveform, right? It's not clipping the top off, whereas when we use a clipper, we literally are chopping the waveform off. So let's see what that does in terms of the harmonic content or the distortion that it generates. So if we go to our harmonic analysis, we can see it's a very clean one kilohertz signal. And watch what happens as soon as I bring this down below the threshold. Bam! Explosion of harmonics. These are all odd harmonics that are generated. Okay, and this is mathematically what happens when you clip a signal. And they're pretty loud. Uh, we're seeing these harmonics as loud as minus 70. So that's like 10, 12 dB louder than a limiter. Now, some people might think, oh, that's really bad. But you're going to see in a little bit, it's not that bad. This has some very unique advantages that we need to know if we want to make loud, powerful, punchy music. And just for sake of completeness, I'm going to show you 
the loud and quiet signals when we have a clipper. So as you start decreasing your threshold, you can see it's clipping the top of the louder signal first, and these are staying nice and rounded. And as we keep going, then all of a sudden, now everything is being clipped. So again, it's gonna target the loudest signals first when we use these clippers in our music. That is an important concept that I want you to remember. So now that we know how limiters and clippers work, let's talk about when and why you would use these tools. So you would use either a clipper or a limiter if you're just trying to control the overall level of a signal, especially if you want very tight control over the final loudness of that track. People use limiters and clippers on guitars, drums, master bus, anything where we wanna really make sure that nothing jumps out of a mix. Now, here is some critically important advice that you have to remember. The limiters are very clean sounding and they're clean because they don't chop the top off of our waveform. So that makes limiters really, really useful when you have something very musical, something like a vocal, something like guitars or bass. Now the beauty of a clipper is that it introduces a lot of distortion. Now this can either be good distortion or bad depending on the source. For most musical stuff, we don't want to add a bunch of odd order harmonics if we don't need to, because it just makes the tone less pure. Unless you're going for a kind of a gritty, distorted sound, then that's totally fine. So when would you use a clipper then? Remember, clippers add a lot of distortion. So if you wanna add anger, aggression, abrasiveness to a signal, a clipper is a great tool to use. Now something most people want are drums that are loud and aggressive. But we all know distorted drums don't sound very good. But here's the magic of a clipper. For audio sources that are really dynamic in nature, like drums, it's only acting on them for a tiny fraction of time. So our ears perceive the clipping of drum transients as almost like excitement of the drum transient. So your snare drums will actually feel like they're getting hit harder and they're more aggressive. Same thing with a kick drum. Whereas a limiter is gonna do it in a very clean way that just makes it feel softer and not have as much power behind it. So for material that has a lot of transient information, a clipper is probably the ideal tool to use over a limiter if you wanna retain the texture and the aggression of that tone. And you will not believe how big of a difference this is. And I'm gonna bring you into a session right now and show you. So this track is called Love and War. It's something that I mix for a band called Once Around. And if you like this song or anything, I have all the artist information in the description. So it's this big like rock ballad, right? Now, we want these drums to be slamming. And if we put a limiter thinking that that is gonna help us make everything louder, we're gonna be gravely mistaken and very, very sad and emotional that our drums suck now because they have no power. Let me show you. All right, so we have nice, big, punchy, roomy drums, right? So let's see what happens when I put Waves L2 on this kick and snare. Now I want you to listen for the power and the impact that the snare and kick drum have. Here we go. Do you notice how it just sounds like they're getting turned down more and more and more in the mix? We could have just done that by taking the volume and turning it down and down and down, right? That's not really helping us make the kick and snare more dense and powerful in the mix. So this is the main problem with using limiters is it just has the impression of turning it down. It doesn't maintain the aggression in the level. Let's see what a clipper sounds like. All right, here we go. Okay, here we go, now we're attenuating. You hear how the drums never got quieter, right? They just sound almost the same or maybe a little bit more aggressive. Okay, those distortion characteristics of the clipper is actually reinforcing the drum transients. Wild, right? Check this out. Let's go back to the limiter and we'll set it to the exact same level and we're gonna switch back and forth between the two. Here we go. So the yellow is bypassed, okay? So we're gonna start with the sound of these drums with the limiter. Here we go. Clipper. You 
you can hear the snare drum has like a little bit more snap to it now. And it stays punchy and it doesn't get quieter, whereas the limiter kind of makes it feel like we're just turning everything down. That is a massive difference. And I see so many people that always go and use limiters on their drums. And I really think it's killing the power of your drums. So now let's talk about when not to use a clipper. Okay, let's go over to like the bass guitar. Bass is extremely tonal. It carries the melody of all of the instruments, right? For the most part. Unless you're some weird avant-garde bass player and you just kind of do solo the whole time or whatever. All right, so now let's limit the bass and see what happens to the tone as we start limiting this. So the bass really isn't changing any of its tonal characteristics, right? It just sounds like it's a little bit tighter and more controlled, and that's it. We're not adding distortion, it's not crunchy, it just feels very balanced and controlled. And if we were to do a ton of limiting like this, we're doing 18 dB, you can just increase the gain. And now you just have a very controlled bass tone that's super level and consistent, which is what you need in a dense rock song so you don't have weird fluctuations. If we try to do the same thing using a clipper, check this out. It sucks. It's not good. Do you hear how it's starting to get really sizzly and buzzy and like almost irritating? Garbage. It's like harsh and gritty and gross. Sounds like your bass player went to a flea market and bought a really crappy distortion pedal. Probably the orange one that everybody gets when they're like 12 years old. So clippers don't always sound good on everything. So again, the key is if you have lots of transient information, you wanna use a clipper on those types of instruments, right? Drum tracks, and that's pretty much it as far as I'm concerned. Anything that is melodic or tonal, like a voice or a guitar or bass, Use limiters. Do not use clippers unless you need extra layers of aggression and grit. Now, in a mastering situation, you kind of have to wrestle with both. You have some transient information from drums, and you have all the tonal information from all those other instruments. In those circumstances, what I actually recommend doing is clipping a little bit to shave down the drum transients, make it more manageable, and then squeezing the track together with the limiter. That's gonna maintain the power of your drums, and then that limiter will then go in and keep things sounding melodic and not adding a layer of distortion. Now, I'm so curious to hear about when you use limiting or clipping. Let me know in the comments. Also, did you think it even made a difference in the track? Let me know as well. It's all these tiny little tricks that add up over time that are gonna help you make professional sounding music. And if you want even more tricks on how to dial in compressors, including limiters, I have that free downloadable guide in the description. So don't forget to grab that before you leave. My name is Bobby Balo. I'm the mixing and mastering engineer at Rayton Productions, and I'll see you in another video.